Here at Western is a very, you know, blue collar, hard work, attack mentality. As soon as you walk into the building, all right, there's a sign that says, let's ride. And that's our slogan for the year. That's the slogan for the culture, for the program is let's ride. And ride stands for responsibility, integrity, development, and effort. When you're prepping to run or you're prepping to do whatever movement, most of the time you want to put a certain amount of force across the joint or across the muscle fascia. Because if you can't prep them properly enough to be able to handle the forces and walking or jogging, how could you ever have an expectation that somebody's going to get out here and sprint as hard as they possibly can? Then from there, that's when we can be a little more dynamic and begin to sprint guys a little more, make the cuts a little more aggressive, and whether it's acceleration or top speed mechanics we're working on, now we know that the body is ready and able to handle those forces. So we play a very physical style of football. Guys, we're really trying to just beat you with toughness. We're trying to be the strongest team on the field. And then we're trying to open up opportunities for our fast guys and skilled guys to go out there and go to work. On the defensive side of the ball, it's the opposite. We're not gonna let anybody else impose their will against us. We're gonna play really tough. We're gonna play really aggressive up front. And we're gonna try to stuff that run play after play after play. And if there's anything that we kind of hang our hat on in terms of our style of football, it's, it's those two things. Run the ball and be able to stop the run. So if a guy has an uh, ankle injury and he's non-weight bearing, that doesn't mean that we can't work on his lower body. I can work on his hip extensors, I can work on his hip flexors, we can work on the hip abductors, the adductors. It's just a matter of placing that person in a situation where they're not hurting themselves and we can work on whatever key aspects that we want to work on specifically for that day. We also usually, for the most part, to make sure the guys are getting a really, really good workout We'll always try to add like some type of metabolic aspect. So whether that's um, med balls for times, the ropes for time, even though they're stepping into the injury pit, we still want to make sure at the end of the day that they're still good football players. I think the the first reason that you you use you know these numbers is is for injury prevention. We've had one in an entire football season, one soft tissue injury. You know, and uh, we were able to stop him from playing before he missed a long period of time, you know. As much as football coaches pay attention to the 40 at the end of the day, it's rare that a player is just going to get out and just run in a straight line just 40 yards. Everybody's going to at least start with acceleration first. The way that we practice, we're trying to go above and beyond. We're trying to make sure that we're pushed. And that's where, you know, some of the GPS stuff really comes into play for us in our preparation because we know, okay, we want to make sure guys are being pushed, that they're running at a fast speed on every play, that the amount of high intensity yardage that they're hitting is there, the overall yardage that they're hitting is there. And that really helps us monitor and prepare the guys so we can work hard, hard up until that point. And then coach is really good about once we get to that point, as the week goes on, we use it to monitor and pull back a little bit. There we go, hustle up, jog them out. Uh, we don't have to uh, ask them how their legs feel. We have the data that proves uh, where they're at, you know. Um, and then the second part is really just the, the how hard they're working. You know, we can see how fast they're moving and how how, mu how many yards they're at full speed and, and uh and if their legs are getting tired, you know, with their fatigue index. And, and we're still learning more. I mean, there's so many numbers we can use. Those, those are the ones we focus on, you know. Some of our guys are so competitive, you know, they'll jump through a wall to try to get back onto the field. But sometimes, We'll also use those GPS numbers to actually, you know, to see has this guy actually gotten to a point where he's fully recovered. There was a specific player that as we began to look at the numbers, his numbers just kept dwindling and dwindling and dwindling. And it looked like it was tougher for him to just complete practice. But the thing is, is that the GPS helped us identify that there was something that was going on. And it was almost like a smokescreen effect. You're identifying something and you may see something, but the numbers will help back up the things that you're seeing. We spend time in every meeting to go over the GPS numbers and go over that report. We'll sit down and talk about, hey, this guy, maybe his workload was really, really high today. We got to take care of him the rest of the week going forward. Maybe this guy, his workload was a little bit light today. You know, for whatever reason, he wasn't going as hard and as fast. And so why was that? Is there something that we need to do about it? Maybe we need to put our foot on the gas with him 
the next day. So he maintains that capacity and is ready to go, you know, week in and week out and staying in good shape throughout the season. And because we kind of have our arms locked and we move forward as a team through that process, it helps us to one, take care of our guys first and foremost, more than anything else, say the best ability is availability. So we're trying to keep them strong, keep them healthy through a long, you know, 12, 13, 14 game season. We always say your number one asset is your availability. You have to be able to play on Saturdays. We do a fastest five every day, you know, where we tell them who are the fastest five guys in miles per hour on the football field. And you'd be surprised, it's not always the fast guys. Who ran the fastest? Who had the most high intensity yards? And that helps them buy in. It gets them excited about, you know, being on the leaderboard, saying, hey, I was the fastest guy on the team today. And coach does a great job of, he posted up in the meeting room. Here are our top five guys. You want to be one of the fastest? You want to be one of the best? You got to get your name on this list. We have to stay strong, right? As strong week one as we can be in week 12 at the end of the season. And so for us, where we can look at and say, all right, this guy ran 22 miles per hour at the beginning of the year. We need to make sure he's running close to that at different times throughout the year, the same way you would in the weight room. Hey, we have to squat heavy every now and then to stay strong. We got to sprint every now and then to stay fast and be at our best. You know, in, in the sport of football, there's contact injuries. There's plenty of them. We have broken this and broken that, and, and that's part of, part of the game. Uh, but the soft tissue injuries are what really hurt a team in the long run. Um, and as they keep adding games and the season gets longer and longer, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's not something we really worry about much because of, because of the numbers we get from the system.